Golden Mullet Aquaman. We take a look at some of the worst games to ever defile your screen. But look away. It's game time. Welcome your very special co-host, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Oh, so special. That's nice. Hello and welcome to this spectacular episode of X-Play. Why does Adam have a mullet? Well, we've dedicated a lot of time to show showcasing the year's best games. And now it's time to focus on the worst of the worst. We present X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards. Though the games are bad, they make for great TV. Yeah. Nice hair, Adam. Thank you. you know, you look like a Canadian NHL player in the late 80s. That's what I was aiming for. And you're doing a great job. Today, we give you a series of games so bad, so buggy, and so poorly designed that it makes this show look like masterpiece theater. Now, call my magnificent mane what you will. A mullet. A short lawn. A schvelte. Or business in the front, party in the back. Whatever it is, the golden mullet was worn by Aquaman in the now infamous Aquaman game for the Xbox. And Aquaman has since become the standard by which all other bad games are judged. So today we give you high profile games that bombed. Squad based shooters that have no squad. A game in which you kickbox Osama Bin Laden and climb down ladders head first. And the cream of the crap? Aquaman himself. Mm, but we kick things off with the Golden Mullet Award for a game that demonstrates what happens when your AI was designed by monkeys infected with the Rage Virus. Here's the appropriately titled Devastation. When you call something Devastation, it could be a new fragrance. Devastation. Or a coping mechanism when your girlfriend breaks up with you. Devastation. Or a dark near future shooter situated in unpleasant surroundings. All right. In the future, there is, get this, an evil corporation that runs everything. And a ragtag group of rebels hell bent on its destruction. Surprisingly, this time around, you play one of the rebels. Who kind of looks like me after a serious bender? Now, stopping these nefarious capitalists requires you to kill each and every one of them. And like any efficiently run business enterprise, there's a lot of them to kill. There's him. And him taking a leak in a war zone. And this dude. Hey! Now, if Devastation limited their ambition to a standard run-and-gun shooter, this would be a mildly amusing murder-a-thon that could hold your attention with its nifty graphics and extremely dirty locales. But you have teammates. Hey, no pushing. Tough guy. Yeah, you are. Ironic cutie pie. Okay, I'm ready. Obligatory foreign type. Name's Duffy with the Urbium Resistance. And the blonde. I've set up a simulator in the back so you can practice. What, what? Now, we all love a little backup, but you want them to be just that. Backup. Behind you. Shooting people. Thinking for themselves. Here, they don't think for themselves. They, they're complete idiots. Devastation. And if they die, the mission ends. Take this, for example. You need to release a crazy runaway cable car to stop the four mounted machine gunners. That's how the heroes do it. Now, when you release it, your team likes to stand right in front of it. Again. And again. Sometimes, they run directly into the machine gun fire. So, what was once a shooter has been transformed into a big escort mission. We don't like escort missions. Now, things change a little bit later in the game. Players can regenerate, and it plays like a team deathmatch as you assault and defend one another's base for their pizza, except there's the enemy AI. This guy likes to run into my radical. He knows how to guard a corner. And look, he's waiting for me to reload. You get the picture. I could go on, but you know, it's kind of like shooting guys only armed with two by fours. Devastation gets a two. Out of five. <laughs> Devastation. Now, 
Pardon me while I fluff my bangs. It, you know what? It is a good look for you. You know, if I ran into you at a monster truck rally, I would totally give you the address of my trailer home. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, now our next golden mullet goes to a game that fails on every conceivable level. And it's offensive to boot. The golden mullet award for the game that just makes you feel dirty goes to Fugitive Hunter. There are many ways a game can go wrong, and Fugitive Hunter manages to find just about all of them. This is one game that will not make you proud to be an American, or a video game fan, or alive for that matter. Roger that, Sierra 5, I understand. You play as a special operative in the CIFR. The Criminal Interdiction and Fugitive Recovery Task Force. Yeah, that. Your job is to hunt down a bunch of fictional fugitives until you ultimately square off with public enemy number one, Osama bin Laden. I wish I could run away from this crappy game. Aside from hunting down dirtbags like bin Laden, Fugitive Hunter plays like every other first-person shooter. You have weapons. Your mother. Oh, plenty of weapons. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, you want more of the RPG? Sure, here you go. The coolest weapon is the TV grenade. And you've got enemies. Tons of enemies. And let me tell you, they simply love the flamethrower. I believe I can fly. Terrorists are supposed to be dumb, but this is ridiculous. No, no, of course I can't see you hiding against that dark wall in your white clothes. And, hey, what's going on over here? So that's how they train terrorists. As if they don't act stupid enough while alive, enemies constantly respawn behind you. When was the last time you saw someone climb down a ladder head first? Exactly. Though you're free to gun down wave after wave of nondescript terrorists, the dastardly fugitives cannot be harmed. Instead, you have to capture them by beating them down in a ridiculous fighting minigame. Virtual Fighter 4, this is not. You may not be able to shoot the fugitives, but post-capture kicks to the head are, however, encouraged. Are we done yet? Oh no, then there's the writing. Pull up a chair and have yourself a listen to these Pulitzer Prize-worthy clips. Too slow. Oh, yeah. You like that? No, not really. So, what have we got here? The gameplay's dull, the fighting minigames are hilarious, and the enemies are morons. And that's it. Keep coming, boys. But that's nothing compared to how little tact was used in making this game. It constantly preys on fear and hatred, yet the final showdown with Bin Laden plays out like it's a joke. If you kill me, 1,000 more will rise. Hmm. All right. Then we'll keep you alive. The bounty on Fugitive Hunter is minimal for a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Out of 5. kicking your ass. Wow. That game sucks. Mm -hmm. When we come back, more of the worst as X plays Golden Mullet Awards continue. You know, the longer I wear this, the more I want to watch NASCAR. <laughs> Coming up, enjoy the crappy control of Tomb Raider. <laughs> Presenting the award for worst introduction in a select market TV show, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. I have a mullet and Morgan doesn't. Up yours, Sessler. Now, if you're just joining us and wondering why Adam has hockey hair, Today we are presenting X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards. We're giving them to some of the worst games we played in the last year. And in case you noticed that we didn't have any trophies to go with the awards, you know, if the developers couldn't be bothered to put any effort into the games, we aren't putting any into this show. <sighs> Next on the chopping block is the Golden Mullet for Worst High Profile Game. It's glitchy, it's twitchy, and horny fanboys still bought it. This is a review of Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. Ooh. Oh, Lara, 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 what are we gonna do with you? 
You're one of the most popular game characters in the world, so what the hell did you do to get stuck in this lame excuse for a game? I can't remember. It's all a blur. Actually, Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness isn't so much a game as it is a list of partially completed ideas. Okay, so there are a few good things about this game. First, the story. It follows Laura through the back alleys of Paris as she attempts to discover who murdered her rival slash mentor, Werner von Croy. Along the way, she has to thwart the plans of an ancient occult organization eager to take over the world. Say goodbye to creepy Egyptian catacombs and hello to creepy wow. Paris prostitutes. Move along, ma chère. You make the place look crowded. And Miss Croft is looking mighty fine this time round. Except for her gigantic square hands. <laughs> but as soon as she starts moving, the good ends. And the pain begins. The controls vary between sluggish and outrageously twitchy. Just get over here. Ah! Who really needs cool back foot moves when lining up for a regular jump is so freaking hard? Oh wait, I forgot, but you can only make that jump after you've turned on the blaring techno music! That's right, what tour of Paris would be complete without a stop in an authentic rundown disco? Now here's a place to show off those useless moves. And step, and jump. Go, Lara, it's your birthday. Uh oh, looks like this bad boy is raving and we've been too hard. Hi there, you wanna dance? This DJ's really cool, huh? Hey, I know, we just met and all, but I think you're really cute. You mind if I shoot you in the head several times? Yeah, the enemies are really stupid. This guy's whole attack strategy seems to be to hide behind his shield and look dead at you. And then there's the escape mental patients who, well, just kind of wiggle at you. Oh, that guy? That's Laura's new buddy, Curtis Trent. Yeah, he's such a badass, sensitive mystic dude that he needs two first names. But you just know he and Laura are gonna hit it off because he's got the same enormous square hands. And he can psychically read post-it notes. Cool. Can we move this along a bit? Okay, I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the other many reasons this game sucks. Bad cameras, random slowdown, random crashes, and a typically Parisian sense of ennui. Or maybe it's just crushing boredom. We could go on, but you get the picture. X-Plague is Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness, a two out of five. Whatever. Our next game is a self-described team-based shooter in which you have no team. The golden mullet for a buggiest and most frustrating game goes to New World Order. <laughs> New World Order bills itself as a super realistic tactical team-based first-person shooter. So, um, where's my team? See, I see no team here. I see little old me with a little old pistol going up against big nasty terrorists with AK-47s. No team. This here may look like a team, but it's not. I'll get back to that later. First off, before I say anything else, let me apologize for the alarm sound. I couldn't turn it off. No matter what, I tried. So you're just going to have to deal. Okay, so, no team, just me. But that's okay, especially since the terrorists are all idiots. Smoke him! Their concept of tactics seems to be, if I dance around fast enough, maybe she'll miss me. Guess he didn't dance fast enough that time, sucker. And it's pathetically easy to sneak up on these guys. Surprise! Kill him! You're dead, dude. You're not killing anyone. But occasionally, they do dance fast enough and you run out of ammo which is annoying. Not nearly as annoying as when the terrorists run out, though. Then they resort to following you around, trying to glare you to death. I managed to attract quite a following of glaring, dancing idiots. Stop stalking me, you bobble-headed freak! But if the gameplay isn't quite up to par, the graphics are, well, crap. How many times do we need to see the first-person shooter cliche sewers, offices, and abandoned city streets? Oh, look! It's just like the lobby from The Matrix. How original. 
and the bad graphics actually get in the way of gameplay. See this ladder? Yeah, you kind of have to squint, but it's there. So I passed it about five times before I finally saw it. And then there are the doors you can't quite get through. Super realistic my butt. Now you may have noticed that a lot of our footage looks the same. Well, I have a confession to make. After playing through the game, we were only able to tape gameplay on one level. Then we get to the loading screen for level two, and oopsie, game go boom. The game also tends to crash when there are any more than two enemies on screen, or if you sneeze hard. But I promise you, the game doesn't get any better than this. So let's see, it's not super realistic, it's not terribly tactical, and it's not team-based at all. Yes, it is a first-person shooter. At least I got that much right in their description. Now I'm gonna say a fond farewell to my troop of jittering wannabe sidekicks here and give New World Order an old-school one out of five. Could the game crash a little more? If ever a title has earned the feathered by levelness of a golden mullet, New World Order is it. And you know, speaking of that, how come I don't get to wear a mullet? Even he has a mullet. I want a mullet. We only have one, and I happen to look better in a Tennessee top hat than you do. No short logs for you. We'll see about that. Oh. <laughs> Up next, the cream of the crap. Aquaman! Now with more bad fashion choices, it's Adam Sessler at Morgan Webb! Welcome back to X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards, where we share some of the worst games of last year. Where'd you get that mullet? It's making you look like the lead singer of Loverboy. Oh, you know I found it. Oh, God! My hair! My beautiful hair! She stole my sweet Kentucky waterfall! I'll just ignore him. My precious. Okay, we finally come to the worst game of the show. Well, that's right, it's time for the superhero who talks to fish. The man who inspired the mullet award. He's earning his rightful place in the gaming hall of shame. It's Aquaman. This is Aquaman. Doesn't look like Aquaman to me. This is Aquaman. You know, the Luke Skywalker boyishness, the tasteful scaly orange mixed with the industrial green of his gloves. This guy, he's got a blonde mullet and a claw hand. What happened? A horrible disaster at a Skinner concert? Now, if you think the fish man looks bad, check out the game. You swim and you fight. Swim more, then fight. That's it, and it still barely works. Reminds me of another famous superhero game, the abominable Superman 64. Looks like the Man of Steel's got a buddy. Now we all know that Aquaman's superpower is that he can talk to fish. Look what happens when the concentric circles come out of his head in the game. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Well. I'm not gonna let some stupid game prevent me from a decent Piscean human discourse. Meet Slippy. He's my new buddy that I took around my hometown. Slippy and me became fast friends. He loved the view. Which is more than I can say for the graphics in Aquaman. The word I like to use is dull. The only effort seems to have been put into Aquaman's golden flowing mullet. And these are what pass for cutscenes comic book panels without sound, but you can add your own. Arthur, you must stop him. You cannot allow this man to continue to attack Atlantis or us. He will not of that, you can be sure. Slippy and I had far better conversations. We talked about his life in the ocean and even called some family. As I said before, virtually all you do in Aquaman is fight bad guys. Sometimes to deactivate bombs, and other times to rescue these Tama Finland rejects. You'd expect then that the combat might be half decent at least. This is the highlight. The controls are mushy, and some combos require an absurd amount of memorization. Not that it matters. Just hit some buttons, move on, hit some buttons. 
Speaking of fun, Slippy and I were having a blast until we went to the wrong part of town. After that, he started to act surly. I think he had too much water. No, no. Aquaman is one of the worst games to come out this year. It has just enough elements to qualify as a game and no more. There is not one interesting aspect of this title to even warrant a rental. Aquaman, the fight for Atlantis, sleeps with the fishes. A one out of five. Oh, and Slippy, well, he made some comment about my hair. I made a comment about deep fat fries and big appetites. Amazing, such a bad game to make for such a great day. Poor Slippy. Mm. Thanks for watching the Mullet Awards. If you'd like to learn more about any of the crummy titles we reviewed today, visit our website. TechTV.com slash xplay. Ta-ta.